It's an incredible base package. I mean, um, I've pretty much been riding all last few days on the, the standard model, the current model. And then just today, I've got the chance to ride with the kit bike, with the kit ECU and exhaust and things. And for me, it's incredible that a production bike's already at this level. I mean, I haven't been involved in a launch of a new bike that's exciting for a long, long time. And everything from the ground up, I mean, from the outside, you can still see that it's a Ninja ZX-10R, but really inside there's a lot of changes that, uh, especially with the light light engine, the light inertia they're talking about, namely that crankshaft weight. Right. Um, That's what you can mainly feel, is it? That's the real difference yeah, in the feel? Yeah, and also from chassis wise as well, it's uh, for me a much easier bike to change direction. Because right. you're, the chassis is helping that, but also coupled with the engine, it's like you're not trying to move, a, you're trying to change direction of a really heavy mass, you know, it's quite quick and nimble. Because you're not stopping a heavy mass, you can stop much faster, brake much deeper, and then you're accelerating as well much faster. So generally all the changes have matched well together. Right. I've never rode a production bike with as many electronic aids, so <laughs> you know just uh, is, it, is it a big difference to last year's model? Would you say? Um honestly I haven't done a lot of time on last year's production model. I rode a bike at the TT <laughs> right. uh, parade lap there and I felt the character quite similar to a race bike, you know, a very, very, very stable machine. Um, but I don't mean slow like in power, I mean slow like handling, you know, just follow each other. So it should be very, uh, everything was a little bit right. slow or in delay, where this bike's more, more agile. Sure. Right. Do you feel like you're leaned over the front a little bit more, like you've got more weight on the front or? Um, it's actually one area I've just, I've had to take some preload off the front because I um, find that the, for my riding style the front is quite hard because I brake into the corner but not super super aggressive so right. when I release the brake I like to have more weight on the front uh, so it's an area where I still feel like I could improve a little bit just with settings and clickers to, to make everything like but I'm, I'm going really fast honestly I think only, only like five or six seconds slower than you know, a race speed lap time with World Superbike, not super stock, super bike. So, Holy this crap. thing is uh, so so good. So, when I'm talking about making small changes, the bike's already in a good ballpark. I just need when just I when I close the small lines, just for my style, need a little bit more weight on the front. And for the rest, uh, you know, quick shifter seems cool. It's working like my race bike, really. And then when I when you try later the kit bike, it's also back shift. So you don't need to touch the clutch at all. You can just, you know, bang through the gears and you know when you space out your last shift from second to first, works so good and constant. So um, I was just trying to time riding this morning really early when the track temperature was low to try and make a really good lap time, but uh, anyway, I think we missed the boat a little bit. But the lap time is still so fast for you know, right. a bike that you can go into your dealer shop and buy a bunch of accessories to, to, to go with it. It's, it's really cool. So, yeah. I mean, I have no idea where, um, as a production model, I don't ride any other bike, so I can only <laughs> compare to to this one. So, right. but in race in race trim, I know we have the best the best bike, and coupled with the fact that the, the big production changes that's happened for 16 is been sort of we've we've really helped to progress that and sure. I don't ride so much in the road but I can only imagine with the light light inertia engine it's gonna be more manageable in, in traffic and you know it's easier to change direction for guys that are not 100% comfortable and I think with the traction control settings what uh, Mitsur Matsuda was getting at before it sounds really good it's almost like a race system where it's they talk about uh, the parameters but I think the best way to describe it is it's kind of uh, it's responsive in real time so right. not just if you hit rain but for example if you're coming out of a corner and you you're spinning up and you adjust the throttle yourself the, the electronics are managing this as opposed to some sort predict, of that's a predictive kind of yeah factor in. yeah I, predictive or active yeah, yeah predictive and active would be good words i think yeah. i i would find but it's not like predefined right. parameters it's working right. in which is 
which is their which is the the bragging point because right. I don't know about others, but they say others don't have this, so it's. Right. Uh, I mean, it's cool. Can you it's, imagine a serious math head that had figured that out? <laughs> yeah, it, that's where. <laughs> I mean, that's where the money is now in uh, in racing and like production. Data management. Almost. It's electronics because right. I mean, everyone can talk about electronics, but not everyone can manage it. So. Right. Yeah, they've, all got, they've all got the same sensors coming off, giving it the same information. It's what you do with that information. Yeah, and that's where so. like the the clever guys really excel. And, right. and these guys have a bunch of experience from MotoGP. This uh, project leader is so so experienced. But he comes from the racing world as well. So right. it, I mean, I when I'm being selfish, I'm really really happy that he's part of it because sure. he's now the project leader for this production bike. And sure. if you've got a racing guy behind that means it's going to be a much better bike for the track.